Hi, just a quick follow-up on this note validator that uh, I did in the last video. If you haven't seen it, this won't make any sense whatsoever, and the link, it will be linked right here, so just click here and watch it. And uh, a couple of people uh, pointed out that um, the LEDs used in here, which I um, sort of assumed were uh, maybe infrared uh, LEDs are actually uh, just a bike, it looks like a bicolor LED and sure enough I've powered the thing up here and of course I should have checked the uh, pins on the back and sure enough they do have uh, three pins, they are a dual die uh, LED so they're at least red, one of the colors is red here so I've powered it up so there you go, even though the um, sensor, the photo diode in here is capable of going into the infrared range as I said from 1400 400 nanometers up to 1100 nanometers so it certainly covers that infrared uh, spectrum but clearly they're just using red LEDs here for the three of them and I've powered the thing up and sure enough I haven't seen any other uh, color yet so I can turn the power off there and we can watch it start up and of course it's probably not going to pass its power on self-test because these LEDs aren't connected uh, over to here so there's no you know feedback from these LEDs to the uh, photodiodes in here and I've put down some white paper just to maybe try and get some feedback because that opt that's an optical uh, path there with the uh, light guide in there to feedback that signal but anyway we can uh, power that up and uh, whoop, there we go no it doesn't, oh there we go I did get them to turn off so there you go but I haven't been able to get it to actually detect a uh, note or anything like that so clearly it hasn't um, you know it probably hasn't passed those sour power on uh, tests and things like that but um, yeah I might sort of whack that board back onto there so the sensors line up and uh, see if we can still see the colors in there and also as many people uh, pointed out the five dollar note I had I didn't see it down there there it is series 2006 so apparently they did drastically uh, redesign the note with uh, some people have mentioned better security features in them so it's probably no surprise that a 2002 vintage firmware in this uh, note acceptor I've got here won't accept these five dollar bills now just as a first guess you might think it's a red green bicolor lead and uh, well is it? I've hooked up an external uh, coin cell battery via a resistor here just to give it some current limiting. There's our red and let's have a look. We get nothing out of the other one at all. Even though there's 8 milliamps flowing through that other one, I don't see anything whatsoever. And if it was infrared, I thought it should show up on the camera. So maybe turn the lights down a bit. In fact, if we turn the lights down a lot, bingo, there you go. I can turn that off and on. We can see that that is obviously on the uh, low wavelength side because the camera sensor um, or video camera sensors can easily pick up uh, infrared or not easily. They're not very efficient, but they certainly can. And uh, we can see that that is infrared, but I can't see that at all, of course, because my eye isn't uh, uh, tuned to infrared but no it looks like it is so it's combined red and infrared lead neat and I'm assuming that the uh, other one on the other board that matches that sensor is going to be uh, identical but uh, we do also want to check these ones out here well these are the photodiodes of course but the leads are on the other board so we'll uh, check those out power them up and see if they're the same they are also a bicolor lead they do have uh, three pins on them and they look like an identical lead. You can see the uh, three pins down inside there. And if you really got this under a microscope, you'd see a bond wire going out there to each leg. And definitely a dual die. But uh, is it the same wavelength? Well, let's find out. Or at least close to. I mean, these could be very specialized uh, leads, of course, uh, specifically uh, ordered from the manufacturer for a specific wavelength. We just don't know. And that looks like just the same red to me. Not a problem at all. And I expect, yeah, it is an identical uh, infrared. But as I said, could potentially be slightly different uh, specific wavelengths ordered from the manufacturer in terms of uh, the infrared. The red looks the same, but yep. There we go. So they're almost certainly identical LEDs. So um, basically four identical dual color red and infrared LEDs at four specific points on the note. 
And now these two outer LEDs uh, with the purple colour, which you, I sort of assumed were um, ultraviolet uh, UV LEDs, they're also showing up on my camera, no problems at all. Look at that. I've got uh, 8 milliamps flowing through that sucker, and uh, we can certainly see it. So I wasn't aware that uh, video, camera, uh, video camera sensors could go into the uh, UV range. So that's either uh, infrared or this camera can actually see some UV there. Nice. Sure enough, I did a quick check, and yes, video cameras can see into the ultraviolet as well. So, uh, yeah, clearly, of course, you know, based on the uh, purple colour of that LED, you know, a really, you know, high-end uh, purple, but essentially going into the UV, considering that I know for a fact that they use uh, UV detection in these note validators, then it's obviously a UV LED. So we have ourselves four dual-colour uh, infrared and red LEDs and two ultraviolet ones on the outside edge of the note. When it comes down to it, there's not a huge amount of security that they're actually doing on this thing. I think they're, they're probably just doing it more to just validate, the, you know, just to check that the note is the proper currency. So they're probably, you know, in the scheme of things, not hugely hard to uh, fool. That's why they have the limit uh, switches on the side, so they limit, you know, what currency you can... Uh, actually detect up to you know um, it's up to the vendor this one can only do up to twenty dollars I mean you know, why would you even bother checking the security on a one dollar bill for example it's just you know it's just not worth it really in the scheme of things so I think it's uh, you know this is a basic and old really you know probably a low cost model I'm not entirely sure I'm just you know it's probably not even advanced for its day so really it's uh, you know probably one of those ones where yeah it's in say a vending machine you just you know, no one's going to bother putting a, you know, a counterfeit bill in to get, you know, a couple of packets of chips or some chocolate or something like that or an icy cold can of Coke. So what I might do is try and actually get myself a modern one, especially like an Australian one, for example, that uh, can detect our uh, polymer currencies. And, and uh, well, I, I think we'll see, you know, a dramatic uh, difference between the very quite simple, uh, you know, sort of rudimentary level technology used in this one and, uh, and more advanced uh, modern ones. And also some people wanted to, like, you know, get me to get the ROM dump and stuff like that and see if we can see the note images and, you know, the, well, the data that, uh, you know, knows at what points. But you probably have to do some serious disassembly like, like that. It's not going to have their, you know, it's just not going to be obvious when you dump the data. So I don't think it's worth the effort. And it's interesting that although these four LEDs here are the same, essentially the same uh, dual colour IR and red, the photodiodes are different. These two inner tracks, of course, angled 45 degrees, much larger uh, sensor photodiode, much larger uh, dye inside there to sense it, whereas these other one, these two outer ones are a smaller photodiode and you know, presumably a different type, even though essentially operating at the same uh, wavelengths. There, obviously, these two center lines are doing something subtly different to these two outer ones here. And some people have asked if I could maybe you know, probe the uh, uh, sensor signals, photodiodes and stuff like that as the notes passing through. And uh, yeah, you could do that and possibly correlate. Uh, you know, you'd have to know the note of the, well, the position of the note. It goes through pretty quick. You'd have to know the position of the note and correlate that timing with the timing on the sensor. But unfortunately, once it's all assembled in place like this, you can't access those sensor boards. All you've got is um, the outputs of the boards, uh, presumably from, you know, the op amp buffers, which is probably good enough, uh, stuff like that. But unfortunately, I put the thing back together and, um, eh, wah, um, <laughs> something... Something is uh, wrong with this thing. It's just not detecting this at all. Anyway, I don't think you'd learn a huge amount by doing that. These things are pretty darn basic. So, uh, yeah, maybe I could have a probe around if I can get it going again, but it's not going to happen at the moment. Damn, don't know why.